you, Aminette, and Diocritus people uh, for having me. It's a history of uh, cohort studies starting uh, with the Framingham Heart Study in 1947. And since then, uh, multiple, I would say hundreds of cohorts have been uh, established uh, worldwide. Um, in Scandinavian uh, countries, uh, cohorts can also be generated from uh, registry data. In Scandinavian countries, you can you can achieve complete a uh, picture of individual health from each inhabitant uh, using such registry data. From different reason in, uh, reasons in Germany, uh, we have not such a complete uh, 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 registry-based picture uh, of our participants. And the major reason is uh, data protection arguments uh, with a background uh, of misuse of uh, of registry data in Asian times uh, during uh, the 1940s to uh, detect Jewish people uh, and also uh, during the times of uh, former German Democratic Republic, uh, there were data misuse from, from governments and official um, uh, officials to, uh, to follow um, people uh, which were not really willing to uh, to live in the system and so on and this is a background why uh, in germany we have really difficulties to connect our cohort data for example uh, to registry data to data from uh, health health insurances and other secondary data sources on the other hand in germany we observed for example in the 1970s, um, the development of differences um, in life expectancy um, in the West compared to the East. Uh, the Eastern part of Germany, uh, we observed a lower life expectancy as well uh, in male newborns, uh, as well in female newborns. And also there was a um, north to south gradient of life expectancy, which could not explain uh, based on, uh, on population based health data. And this was a background why, why the German government fostered uh, to establish um, uh, cohort studies as early in the 1970s and 1980s and supported international uh, endeavors uh, to, to population-based research and public health research. And you've heard about the EPIC studies, two EPIC sites uh, are still alive uh, in Potsdam as well as, as in Heidelberg. And there were also three Monica sites, uh, two in the West and two uh, and one in the East um, uh, in the early 1980s. This was a starting point uh, of cohort business, I would say, uh, in Germany uh, with the classical background of public health research distribution of prevalence of risk factors and diseases difference, regional differences, and so on and so forth. And in the 1990s, uh, there was, an, I would say, an acceleration of uh, establishing uh, multiple cohorts. These are uh, only, this, this is really an incomplete picture of, uh, uh, of regional cohorts uh, with different um, aspects of health and also on on complex uh, complex picture uh, of health and disease. I will we'll talk later on about a study of health in Pomerania. Um, in the middle part of uh, Germany, uh, there was a Kala cohort established uh, focusing on cardiovascular disease. Heinz Nixdorf recall study, study had a broader focus, but also uh, mainly on cardiometabolic disease. As Gutenberg health studies uh, was established uh, 10 years ago uh, with the emphasis on neurological disease um, and cardiovascular disease and the special emphasis on neurological and psychiatric disorders was put in the Rhineland study and also the Hamburg city health study uh, has a relatively com comprehensive a focus on, on general health. Um, from the Monica cohorts as a starting point, Annette and colleagues uh, supplemented um, and added two new cohorts so that the CORA study, Monica CORA's uh, project, uh, now comprises four independent cohorts which are followed up by examinations and, and health surveys. These are only a few few cohorts as examples for adult cohorts. We have at least 10 uh, uh, children cohorts on the regional levels and also other smaller uh, adult cohorts uh, for, for different endpoints as uh, focus. 
And in addition, uh, there are also um, nationwide uh, examinations, population-based examinations. I will talk later on on the uh, German national cohort, the Narco Gesundheitsstudio, and also uh, led by the Robert Koch Institute. Uh, there are at least two population-based cohorts, um, one uh, including children and adolescents, it's a kick study, and the other one including adult people that's dex uh, study uh, which are mainly um, used for for public health um, uh, research but can also be used for uh, for other scientific uh, uh, research uh, activities so actually the archetype uh, of epidemiological cohort studies are studies like the dex cohort or the initial framingham heart studies uh, these are characterized by uh, by a very focused uh, examination, uh, focused on certain diseases or, or disorders to explain differences, uh, regional differences across across regions, or uh, also to explain risk factors for diseases, uh, the role of dis uh, subclinical disorders as predictors for diseases, and also can also be used for for omics research. It's, this archetype of cohorts is also characterized uh, by a study size of uh, a few thousand uh, participants, uh, which are mainly selected population based. Uh, and as we already heard uh, from Naomi, uh, there's a trend uh, in cohort uh, epidemiology uh, towards much larger sizes of study populations. The UK Biobank is a classical example for this, and Naomi impressively uh, uh, showed us the, the options uh, to use uh, those cohorts uh, for omics research. Um, these are cohorts um, that can um, very, very well used uh, for case cohort studies, for example, uh, because they have a special emphasis on uh, um, defining validly endpoints or so clinical diseases, and they have uh, also a big resource to uh, to select um, um, uh, to select controls, uh, having uh, no such diseases for uh, case cohort or case control studies. And the other trend in current epidemiology is towards um, a much broader, much much more comprehensive examination to collect information on many many phenotypes uh, which also can then be used uh, for omics uh, research uh, these cohorts like the ship cohort um, are of similar size to the archetype of cohorts a few thousand uh, people or even a little bit more nowadays and i will uh, show you um, or I'll give you some insight um, on, on our ship cohorts um, in the next uh, slides. Uh, uh, ship um, is conducted in the upper northeastern part of Germany as a rural area uh, compared to, to other regions in Germany. And we started uh, to recruit uh, participants, adult, adult participants uh, in 1997 uh, for the first ship start cohort. And as you can see on this scheme, uh, this ship, ship start cohort um, has been re-examined um, uh, four times uh, and 10 years uh, after the first cohort we uh, started to establish a second cohort ship trend uh, called ship trend which has been also followed up one more time now ship trend because uh, one of the aims was to assess the prevalence trend of risk factors in diseases and diseases in this particular area and Currently, we are busy with uh, establishing the third independent cohort that we call SHIP Next. Uh, what makes SHIP really special is the very comprehensive examination program. If somebody asked me um, uh, which um, examinations uh, have you included in the SHIP examination program, I always answer, don't ask me uh, what examination we included. Please ask me what examination which are not painful, not harmful, and uh, non-invasive uh, which we have not included uh, in, in, in the ship core. There are ultrasound examination, other uh, techniques to uh, explore morphological changes uh, in the human body. Uh, we have also functional uh, examinations like cardiopulmonary exercise testing or reading tests and so on uh, to explore dysfunction of organ system. 
Uh, we were also the first study which established whole body MR in a population-based setting. Uh, it's very exciting because on the left hand you see or uh, you assume uh, the amount of information on organ sites, on subclinical disorders and diseases that can be obtained from, from these pictures. On the other, other hand, it was also very challenging uh, to cope with the problem of incidental findings, how to communicate or what findings to, to communicate to, uh, to the affected participants to not induce too much, uh, too much uh, horror uh, if I learn about potential tumor uh, diseases and so on and so forth. Um, in the ship next uh, cohort is characterized also by a very comprehensive examination program. Participants stay over 24 hours in our examination center if they agree to be included in all uh, examination modules. In addition, we invite them uh, for examinations of their, uh, of their uh, animals, so with a focus on poultry, uh, cats and dogs. And um, from our point of view, it's very imp uh, important to extend our human cohorts to animal cohorts, uh, because we know from the uh, um, uh, corona pandemic how uh, important uh, uh, such uh, relationships between uh, humans and animals can be. This whole program is supplemented uh, with additional laboratory analysis, uh, not only genome-wide data available and metabolomics data, but also RNA expression, methylation data, uh, proto proteomic data, and so on and so forth. And I would uh, uh, emphasize a point here that cohorts was a very comprehensive examination program with a very ex comprehensive and broad phenotyping um, uh, offer a very cost-effective um, uh, approach to uh, to omics uh, research because omics analysis or laboratory analysis are expensive in several thousand uh, participants but if you can use those information uh, to associate this with comprehensive multiple hundreds of phenotypes uh, it got it gets very cost efficient compared to, uh, for example, clinical uh, case cohorts. And of course, um, uh, we are involved in all consortia worldwide uh, that use uh, genome-wide data. And by experience, it's sometimes a bit, a little bit limited because, um, um, the, for example, in the giant cohort uh, co uh, consortium, which now includes more than one million participants. Uh, hundreds of studies um, are included with different approaches to measure, for example, height or uh, or weight. And um, as we know from 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 such collaborations, uh, there is potential bias um, and differences uh, ero erosion from uh, from different methods to uh, to collect data on on different phenotypes and. Uh, um, for example, for obesity, there's a different uh, difference. Of course, are included that collect data on self-reported weight, or if they measured weight, and if uh, they measured, uh, did they use standardized scales or not? Uh, did they measure the body weight with or without clothes? And uh, uh, and by experience, also by experience, even if you think in terms of whole body MRI, there can be uh, major differences between different devices from different vendors, but also within one and the same countries, different uh, machines can measure differently, especially in smaller substructures, for example, in the brain of the, uh, if you measure functional, uh, functional things. So, um, even high quality epidemiological studies usually take less care on external external validity and that's the reason why uh, there's always some uh, some some limitation in uh, in consortia if they collect and combine existing data and therefore we uh, we went the past to uh, to support other studies uh, before they plan to collect population based data and that we uh, refer as uh, studies of health informations uh, and the aim is really to to achieve a consortium on the long term to uh, uh, with studies with really well comparable phenotypic data and our first study uh, has been established in Brazil in Brazil because there's a, a subpopulation of really Pomeranian origin um, and uh, in, in the city of Pomerode and uh, 3,500 participants, adult participants uh, were 
uh, were recruited and examined uh, based on chip methodology. We also trained and certi certificated uh, the observers there in our examination center in Northeast Germany. And uh, we have now really well comparable data to compare the Brazilian Pomeranian with our uh, German Pomeranian. And the second sister study is uh, now running in Bialystok in uh, Eastern Poland uh, uh, based on the same principles. So, and if I talk about the trends in current epidemiology, then I would also like to mention, of course, the German national uh, cohort. That's something in between a compromise between size and comprehensiveness. Uh, the uh, German national cohort um, uh, recruited 205. A thousand men and women aged 20 to 69 years across Germany and 18 study centers. And uh, what makes the uh, German national cohort for Germany, for Germany uh, uh, project funding special is that it has really a 30 year or even a 50 year, a year nowadays perspective. Uh, currently, uh, we are collecting data on the five, first five year follow up uh, examination and we have also uh, obtained funding for for a 10 year follow up examinations. The baseline examination uh, for the majority of participants uh, was uh, targeted and included more or less simple examinations like interview, uh, blood pressure measurements, um, and uh, hand grip strengths, of course, uh, bio, sample, uh, bio sampling, and a few other things took two and a half hours on average. Uh, but the level two examination would, uh, were much more comprehensive and uh, took around five hours to six hours in 70,000 or 60 to 70,000 uh, participants and included all, also more sophisticated examinations. At five examination sites, we also conducted uh, whole body MRI in more than 30,000 uh, participants and to, uh, to warrant comparability with other cohorts, parts of the protocol where uh, uh, we are compared uh, to the UK Biobank imaging protocol. Music